So let's have a conversation today about the creation and management of online mobs. The internet is friggin' weird, right? That there's just craziness at every turn. And a lot of the time it has to do with the way that we self-organize on the internet. Uh, the, the locations that we go to are almost like a, a signpost for the, the kind of activities we want to participate in, which is really interesting to me. So we're going to talk about three different kinds of online mobs today. We're going to talk about what, uh, what you could call the equivalent of a flash mob, when someone does something on the internet and instantly everybody knows about it. We will talk about um, <coughs> what they call anti-SJW movements like Gamergate and the Sad Puppies. Why the hell not? I might as well tackle it sooner or later. And then third and finally, we're going to talk about things like hacktivism and online activism in terms of politics and <coughs> the way that people try to get policies changed. And we'll talk about Anonymous um, all over the world and the Pirate Party out of Sweden. So first of all, how many of you have heard of Justine Sacco? You ever heard that name before? What about the woman that tweeted about uh, not having to be worried that she was flying to Africa and might get AIDS because after all she's white? Couple more, yeah, there you go. You didn't remember her name, but you remember that tweet, don't you? Uh -huh, exactly. Like, quarter of you remember the name, or remember the tweet, but not the person's name. And yet, when you go Google Justine Sacco's name, what's the first result that pops up? She used to be a bigwig somewhere. Oh, you're thinking of another white person that said something super stupid on the internet. Okay. Yeah, well, I feel like if I just Google that right now, that I'll have a full menu, even a buffet of options to choose from right now. Let's focus on the one white person I'm thinking right now who said something super stupid on Twitter, then got on a plane for six hours and thought it would all be swell. Now, let's let's remember first, first when she... What's that? First Google results in the first New York Google results in New York Times article, exactly. Let us remember, that, first of all, I get her humor. Right? I absolutely get it. She was being sarcastic. She was pointing out the inequality in Africa, right? She was pointing out, as a white person, I have a far lower chance of getting AIDS if I'm in Africa because I don't experience some of the same socioeconomic problems in, in that country, right? So she was, she was being sarcastic. She was pointing out an injustice, but the way she phrased it was so bad that it came across as the kind of racism she was actually attempting to mock. Uh, there's in a in a slight tangent, you could take a look at the Dick Wolves incident from Penny Arcade in it's like five six years ago maybe I think. There was a, a a cartoon called The Sixth Slave that the guys at Penny Arcade put out, and the cartoon itself was about the kind of mentality that gamers can get into, where you go and you quest and you rescue five slaves, and the sixth guy is sitting there going, wait a minute, why why don't I get rescued? And I'm not going to quote the entire thing. Go look it up yourselves if you want. Um, but the, the cartoon was problematic in its language. It was pointing out the insensitivity of setting people up to go and rescue only some people. How do you choose? Which ones are you choosing? And even if it is an imaginary environment, why would you set people up to go to a place and only fix part of the problem? That's what the cartoon was actually mocking. But the language, again, was problematic enough that people just totally ignored what the cartoon was about, what the comic was about, and just went the hell after the, the Penny Arcade guys. The cartoon itself, for me, was not a problem. The way they responded to it was a little problematic. I will definitely say that. I, I come down on the side of the people who think that it was the response to it that was the problem and not necessarily the cartoon itself. Um, and the same thing, I think, is definitely true of what happened with Justine Sacco's tweet here, where she is pointing out an injustice and a really bad one, but she did it so badly that that's all we remember about her. And on the surface, prima facie, uh, the next for the rest of her life, that's going to be what people know about her. We we almost none of us get a chance to get really really famous, and yet you don't even have to know her name to know what it, what I'm talking about because you're on the internet and you see what's going on. So what happens when you do something like that and it shows up in Google results for you for the rest of your lives? I'm not just going to point out what these are. I'm actually going to show you some of the things that I would do to fix this problem if I was this person. Persecution, but it's more widespread. Mm -hmm. Persecution. You can move away and start over. Exactly, and that's the problem there. 
Okay, so you can't move away from the internet and start over someplace else. I mean, well, so you, so you sort of could, maybe on Darknet, but then you would turn into one of those people. Hmm? You learn another language, maybe. Now, that is an interesting thought. What if you learned another language? If she basically just exited the English-speaking world, that is a solution I never thought of before. I love beginner brain. What's that? Yes. It could still haunt you. Hey, hang on first. We got a hand in the back. Go ahead. She could publicly announce that she had gone through a hard time and was enrolled in counseling. Yes, I'd personally take it a step further. Um, I mean, I would be doing mea culpas in a blog. I would be starting a podcast, whatever it was. I would have to recognize at that point that that was the thing that would define the rest of my life if I didn't redefine it myself, right? When something like that happens to you, either it defines you for the rest of your life or you redefine it yourself. See, in an interesting side note, Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. See how she's redefining her life right now. Not, she, she tried to get away from her from the incidents in 1997. There's no way to escape from that. She'll never escape from it. So she's redefining herself around it in a different way to help people, right? So when you do something like that, that's that friggin' stupid, basically your only option is redefine yourself around helping to fix the problem that you inadvertently contributed to, right? It sucks, that's, I mean, that's your option if you want to go anywhere in public life ever again. She could always retire and do pottery, I guess. 40, 50 years from now, no one's going to remember it. So it's a little scary, isn't it? That's how fast that could happen. I was recently in a situation where um, someone, how to, how to put this, somebody asked me to do something that I found very problematic in a racist sense. Um, and it was the way that I was asked to do it. And I pushed back and did not do the thing in a situation where I was expected very much to do the thing. Um, and it caused a problem and it caused me to break off with a social circle that I really enjoyed. Um, but this, the, whether their intent was good, and it was certainly good, the price for having done something like that could have been so high for me that it was simply not worth it. And that's, that's a scary thing to do. But you know, that social pressure is also a good thing. Experiencing that widespread social pressure to do something the right, because it's right, and because you would be a bad person if you did something that was problematic in terms of sexism or racism or any of the other isms, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing at this point. We have a lot of freedom and using it to publicly state our views and come to a consensus on things like gay rights is one of the ways that online mobs can be used in a positive way, all right? So let's take a look now at another kind of online mob and these are the um, what you would call the anti-SJW mobs, social justice warriors. That's an expression on the internet for somebody who makes a living out of being someone who is a, an advocate for diversity. Um, I, I defined it in a very neutral term. It's not necessarily always used in a very neutral way. There are people that kind of try to reclaim the term. I don't know how, how well that's been done. Um, it's a the, the, the mobs like Gamergate and the sad puppies. Do you know what sad puppies are? I'm assuming most, you, you've heard me talk at least once or twice about Gamergate. What's the sad puppies, do you know? Okay, when I say a term and you don't know it, I wanna hear the thunderous response of all of those really third-rate keyboards pounding away and going for Google. So give me some sad puppy Googling, come on. I should be able to hear that. I should hear every single key hitting those keyboards in this entire room. They're so terrible. Go ahead. It was basically uh, the game to vote something. Mm -hmm. Basically, make something win by having a bunch of people vote on. Right. As opposed to just voting on Literary awards. It's the equivalent in the science fiction and fantasy world of Gamergate, where there is a there is a, a backlash against what is seen as. Um, prioritizing diversity at the expense of creativity and freedom of expression in either games or in science fiction and uh, fantasy. And I'm stating it very neutrally because I know people on all sides of these situations. I'm sure you can figure out which sides I sympathize with the most. Um, I think tastes are changing faster than some folks would like to see them change. And I think that's really where this backlash is coming from. Um, most of the people involved in these debates are bloviating and they're full of hot air on the internet. That is not a crime. Um, the, there are people that take it too far in both of those movements and the idea that you should and can create a block to stop people from winning something that a general portion of the public thinks that they should win is 
a strong use of political power and a strong use of social and, and technological power. Um, I would be very interested, I'm not entirely sure that I know which direction I fall in this, I'd be very interested to know your thoughts on whether or not, not necessarily either Gamergate or the Sad Puppies or any of these social justice or backlash movements are right or not, but whether or not the tools that they're using are, should, be, should be used. Whether or not the tools of um, the kinds of, of comments, the kinds of reactions that are being given are appropriate to fight the battles that they want to fight. Is it okay to do it this way? I don't really know the answer to that question. Some of the tactics I've seen Gamergate and the Sad Puppies use, like creating blocks of support to get a thing done, seems pretty reasonable to me, right? So, I mean, this is what we call a caucus in United States political campaigns. So, which is just coming to an agreement, coming to a consensus, finding candidates. So, all right, so the next part of this is now that we get what that flash mob can do to your life and what online movements that are political power blocks to get something accomplished or stop something from being accomplished are, the last part of this is looking at uh, hacktivist movements like Anonymous. What's Anonymous? Exactly that. Well, that's, I like that answer. Okay, Anonymous is exactly that. You think it's funny that the, that people think there's a leader of anonymous. Like some reason they're like, yeah, the, ha uh, the leader. The leader of anonymous. Yeah, there's, there's. I sincerely doubt that all of anonymous ever agrees on what well, day of the week it is at any one given time. Yeah. It's absolutely true. A bunch of people are doing a thing because they want to. What, what are some of the things that you've heard Anonymous do? They just popped into the news just very recently. What happened? They shut down ISIS. They shut down right? ISIS's Twitter? And weren't they the ones mm -hmm. that also... Um, Did they do that? Okay. ...were saying they were going to release names of people that were in law enforcement when they came to the KKK? Said that they would release... They did release the names of people who were both in law enforcement and the KKK. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about uh, Anonymous releasing the names of law enforcement officers who are also part of a private organization? Seems legit. Seems legit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it's a private organization, but sure. what they're If they're law enforcement, okay. What if they're members of the Communist Party? Maybe, maybe not. They're the exact same kind of organization, both taxable and in terms of probably the number of people that support them rapidly in the United States. The Communist Party doesn't have a history of violence. The Communist Party doesn't have a history of oh. violence? No. Oh, not like the wow. Okay. Okay. Not, okay, not like the, okay, well, um, Let's look at so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point you at Wikipedia on that one, and we're going to have a very extended so conversation about system. this. However, oh no, you need to look at the history of the Communist Party in the United States. Check out the 1920s and 1930s. Yeah, this is, um, so the, the question of violence is a really good one. So is, is, is the crossing over, is the point of the problem not their political viewpoints or social viewpoints in terms of racism, but is the problem that they're advocating violence? The problem is more they're advocating something that's they're advocating, well, everybody ad advocates something that's detrimental to others. If I advocate raising, raising the taxes on the, the wealthiest 1% of America, that's taking away from the welfare of the 1% of America. Doesn't do such a good job. Well, I think Anonymous helps to try to move mm -hmm. movements, so they've hacked other websites too. Like yes, they do. They, they hack a lot of different websites. Yeah, they dox people. I've been doxed. I know what that's so like. There's What's there's that? There's a lot of different cases of animal abuse, and they dox people. Like they yes, they do. Animal abuse is a really good example of this. We're, we're, we're starting to circle in on something here which is very interesting to me, which is that you all start getting appalled when violence is involved. Um, and it's easy to, to gang up on one side of the political spectrum, especially if many people in a given room fall on the other side of it. But I do appreciate that it seems like what you're all really advocating here is as soon as a group advocates violence, that's the moment at which they've stepped outside the bounds, right? Uh, I personally can find the KKK appalling and, and horrifying all I want to, but do I want to be told what to believe? Right? So what did Pablo Hotel ever do to deserve it? Um, 
Oh, oh that guy? Yeah, he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve it. The the guy that was photoshopped into the turban and the, the Quran? No, on Habo Hotel, where yeah. they all had, they had a bunch of people flood mm -hmm. uh, the rooms and Afros, and they wouldn't let anyone mm -hmm. actually There's a lot of, see, and what we're talking about now is a sort of weird civil disobedience, right? And what I'm trying to do here is, is point out that all of these organizations have views that somebody finds problematic. I think that it's going to be very fair to say, and I'm not going to stretch the truth here, when I say that basically almost everyone in this room is going to find the KKK completely and totally offensive and appalling, and that I am certainly one of those people, right? And yet, at the same time, we we have to remember that when in an, in an internet and in a society where there is a place where there are no boundaries, where no one's created laws to govern it yet, who makes the law on the internet? Maybe that's where I've been going all along on this one, right? Who makes the law on the internet? What is right and what is wrong there? Is it right to go after someone like Justine Sacco for bad humor? If you are someone who believes strongly in your viewpoint in terms of your, your tastes in science fiction and fantasy and you abide by the rules, is it right or wrong to do what you did? Is it someone's job to condemn the people in Anonymous for having the set of views that they do and taking the actions that they do? I personally have a problem when things cross over into violence, and I don't care who you are or what portion of the spectrum you're on, that's the moment where you all circle back around to extremism again and it's time to stop right there. Right? Then we get into things like, like verbal violence, harassment, and people have different dividing lines and definitions of that. I personally am someone who has a problem with organizations like Gamergate that use the tools of verbal violence and silencing to try to keep people who don't like their views quiet. Does that seem fair? I don't, I'm not a fan. So it's, I, I don't think it is fair. I, I think that the creation of mobs and the management of these mobs online is very problematic. I think they happen sometimes inadvertently. Um, humans have a mob mentality sometimes, and sometimes the very worst of that comes out in rapid action on the internet. How many times have you seen someone post something that looks just right enough to be true as a news item? And 50 shares later on Facebook, there's a Snopes article up going, what were you people thinking? Right? People react rapidly and emotionally to things that they see, and on the internet, they are given the tools to do so much faster than operates with their ability to make sound choices, I think. I'm trying to be as moderate and open-minded as I can here. I've got strong views on a lot of these, these situations. Uh, but I think that just as we don't necessarily always get to decide who makes the law on the internet, there are also sometimes very positive effects of this online mobbing behavior. Do you remember the, uh, the kid, Ahmed Mohammed, who uh, got busted in Texas for bringing a clock to school, right? There is no doubt that was inventing while brown, right? No doubt whatsoever. This kid was targeted because he was Muslim, right? So the, the, that is the, the actions that many different invention um, maker, hacker communities, the community, the, the world as a whole, were spurred into, I feel we're very positive as a result of that. Many organizations are now funding uh, schools and scholarships to bring kids from rural areas into um, environments where they can be permitted to invent in peace, with a special focus on making sure that people who are traditionally disadvantaged get an opportunity to do so, which I think is wonderful, right? Okay, so there's great things about it, just as much as there are sc sad and scary things. How do you feel about this? So did I did I present it well enough to you to give you an idea of what's going on without, like, driving any nails too hard into the wood here? Go ahead. I think with like just uh, Justine Sacco, mm -hmm. that's something that the news media outlets put it out there to basically just clickbait. Their clickbait and whether or not the media is complicit in the creation of online mobs. I wonder if I have lots of opinion on that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I have opinions on that one. Yes, that happened. She was turned into clickbait really fast. Six hours later, right, she gets off the plane and her entire existence is over. She was fired while she was on the plane. Yeah. I don't know what happened in her home life and her home situation, but she, she yeah. So if she's re reinventing herself or taking some time off, then good for her. 
I get her original intent. I get the original intent of the Penny Arcade guys who posted that that comic that was problematic. There was even a hashtag mm-hmm. that popped up asking, mm-hmm. has, has, Justine has Justine landed? landed? I remember oh, that oh, hashtag. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And everyone's sitting there going, and, and it has that whole, like, baby Jessica feeling like you're just sitting there going, oh, my God, what is this woman going to do when she gets off the plane? Right? Talking about it right now, posting this video on YouTube, am I contributing to it? depends on who you ask. And that is a very smart answer and we're just going to leave that <laughs> as the end of today's lecture. <laughs>